So, I just did a video for 15 minutes talking about the A Strong M Series optical gaming mouse, the M3, I believe it's called, that I bought off Amazon.com for a total of $16, um, maybe about two to three weeks ago. I meant to get this review up sooner, but I've been really, just the holiday has been really busy. Also, health reasons, I just haven't been able to find the time. But I finally got the video up now, so better to late than never. This mouse is definitely probably an unknown element in as far as gaming mice go. Um, not it's a new company from what I've read. It's it's relatively new in the states. I don't know if they have products out in maybe uh, Europe and Asia already, and if or how long they've been around for. But I do know that the customer service so far has been really nice. I, re I required uh, some information about the mouse itself before I did the review, doing my homework. And they were really, really quick to respond, very friendly, some really decent people. Um, this mouse surprised me, to say the least. It's definitely the best sub $20 mouse I've used, especially for gaming. The difference is that. I find this from other mice in that price range are functionality, quality of both sensor and externally, the little things externally that it has, and also just the reliability so far this past month. I mean, hell, some mice I buy it for $20 and it's, they're done in the first week for whatever reason. You know? And that's a lot of times it's just quality control. I'm not saying that most mice will give up in the first week of using them. Sometimes companies don't have good quality control. So far, this mouse has been really well. Some of the features, the pros, if you will, that I found with this mouse so far are the fact that you have seven buttons, right? And you have software that it comes with the disc, its own, its own uh, uh, mouse key assignment. And you can reassign any of the buttons, which is nice. Because this does come with DPI on the fly, meaning you can switch the sensitivity of this mouse while playing your game. So you don't have to actually go into any software. You just click this middle button up top. So this says DPI right there. If it focuses, Jesus. <laughs> there we go. DPI right there. Use that to... Uh, to change the sensitivity to lower or higher. You flicker through it. And that was really cool. I don't think I've used a mouse that um, had that um, under $20 and actually work well. A lot of times I've used mice that have it are cheaper and it'll lag or won't register for whatever reason. Bad sensor maybe. That was the first plus side was the DPI and the software to reassign any key on the mouse to whatever you need it for. As functional as far as functionality goes, that's top notch for a mouse, especially under twenty dollars. Now it is an ambidextrous mouse, so for left handed users, go for it. Because as a right handed gamer, with my with my mice, they're all right handed, I found this mouth mouse extremely comfortable. I am not gonna lie, I'm surprised about how comfortable I found it, because I usually hold my my mice with a right handed style. I like that curvature that you get on right-handed mice that curve in to fit your thumb better. And it has that, but it also has it on the left side too, which normally would annoy me, but for some reason with this mouse, the way they, they designed it ergonomically, it just it just works for it. Flare, the, the two top triggers, the right and left buttons, they flare out kind of uh, in a more comfortable, comfortable design. Gives you a little more space where you won't accidentally slip off and hit something else because you have room. Now, I'm a, I'm a fan of two side buttons on the left side of the uh, side of the mouse, and this doesn't have that. It has seven buttons, so it does have extra buttons you can use, but they use it to give you more space for your thumb and the, also your, your other fingers, like your pinky and ring finger, so I do respect that. I think it was a good decision, actually. I actually, for this mouse, it really does work. Um, what they did was they put two buttons on the side of your left trigger, your left, your left top trigger. The first button in the back is basically like kind of like a, a Windows key function in the sense that 
it will exit you out of any game that you're playing and it will rotate it will show you it will rotate it's a yeah it's a tab it's a it cycles through any programs you have up all the way to cycling through to just your desktop background honestly on a mouse that is one of the coolest functions that i found for me to be very useful because i hate the windows key definitely awesome and you can use that for if you're just doing like you say if you're you work on the computer normally networking cad projects whatever you may do in your life just internet browsing for god's sakes you can use that button i mean that works for anyone watching movies browsing the internet go through different tabs you know what i mean it, it does it really does help cycle through your music to your internet to your video game there you go i use it all the time i actually just i actually um turned off my windows key um through some software on my keyboard because I hate using it. The uh, mouse wheel does have a click. It's considered a button. It has a rubber tire kind of look to it. If this will focus, my camera is not the best. It's a older camera. But this is the the rubber button, the rubber button right there, the rubber tire kind of treading it has like a tread on it and it, it's it's comfortable and it does if your hands get clammy when you use the mouse for a while it does it does not have a problem sticking now this button right here is like a feel like a copy and paste type of button dragging items and then these two are actually your left and right inside mouse buttons that are used for forward and back which a lot of games I use for key bindings or whatever for whatever I might need it for if I'm playing a first person shooter it's my grenade and maybe my grenade and my uh, my melee attack and in and like fantasy games and MMOs I use it for my spells or auto run I actually adapted to it being on the right next to the right trigger very quickly and I actually prefer it with this mouse the style that it is the way it's shaped I actually prefer it that way. And I think a lot of people will too once they actually give it a shot for more than a day. This mouse definitely blew me away with just the functionality and also the ease I had using it. I'm not saying it's top of the line, it's going to be out $80 mice all the time, but I definitely think it's worth more than $20. As far as functionality, sensor accuracy, lim limited lag, all those things are important to me. And it really does excel in that. This is the box it came in. It's a cheap kind of looking box. It's not the best fit and finish. And you gotta understand, this is a new company too, I feel like. Um, going with gaming mice. And the box is pretty simple. And I don't really mind that. I don't really care about the exterior, what the box looks like. So I'm kind of biased in my opinion. But it's just, a, but anyway, can say this is a simple box. It comes with a disc software, which I actually really like. It's simple. And it's really easy to use. The software is very self-explanatory, and it's simple, but it's very efficient. And actually, I'll bring it up right now to go through it a bit. Now, let me see real quick. Let's bring this bad boy up. This is software right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. She can. Okay. All right. It might not be the best picture. I apologize. I actually can't see what you guys are doing right now, or you guys are seeing that is. You have main control tab and advanced settings tab. All right. Pretty simple. No special synapse from Razer, but simple layout. Also efficient layout. Button assignment one through seven. All the buttons you can reassign to whatever you want. You can assign macros, multimedia, button off, single key, fire key, double click, CPI switch, forward and backwards, scroll, right click, left click. Pretty good amount of options, you know what I mean? Um, and that goes through all seven keys. You also have profiles, which makes it easier to do re button reassignment as it is. Then you have advanced settings, which give you the option of um, hiring and lowering your polling rate which helps with latency and reaction time I believe now I usually leave it at a thousand I figured I game a lot 
probably preferably to be a thousand, like highest as it can be. And CPI switch sw uh, switcher settings are four different settings, and that is five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, and twenty five hundred. Now I use it for gaming. I usually use it around fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred for the games I play. Some games are more sensitive than others, but I believe these settings are actually very good choices. They're well thought out choices for happy mediums. I normally use 1600 to 1800 in some games, and then 2400 to 3000 in others, depending on the kind of game it is. So the fact that this is 2500 for myself and my own preferences, and 1500, it works really well for me. It might not work for everyone, and I, if that's the case, then I wouldn't suggest this mouse. I'm not going to recommend a product that you wouldn't be able, wouldn't be able to use comfortably. So that's pretty nice. It's simple. But efficient, like I said, I really do like it, and um, I do say that I do think that the software is is worth checking out. Like I said, you don't have to. This mouse is plug and play. I didn't even know there was software for the first like week because I thought it was a downloadable driver, right? I didn't realize because the the way the uh, disc is is very small disc. It fell into the bottom of the packaging. And I never noticed it when I, I got, I was excited to try the mouse out, pulled it out, didn't even notice pack, I couldn't even see it. So I didn't find it until the second week, I just like randomly looked in the box, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> so I felt like a schmuck. But anyways, so far this mouse has really been ple uh, pleasant to work with, I actually really like gaming with it, and I will be keeping it, I did buy this on my own, and this is not a review, um, this isn't like a bribery from, um, a strong and it's a really it's a really good mouse for under twenty dollars I would definitely say this mouse is worth buying even at thirty forty dollars depending if you're you know depending on your preferences and what you like in a mouse I do have some little bit of um, gripes little small gripes like I don't care for gloss glossy smooth finishes I do prefer matte I do prefer rubberized texture on the sides now I can't really gripe about this mouse because of the fact that I paid less than I would pay for me and my girl to go to the movies for one night. Just for the tickets alone. And I get a constant, reliable product that is comfortable, good functionality, good sensors, that will last me, hopefully for a while. So I really can't make any gripes about that. But this is what I would say if I had gripes. Say this is a $60 mouse. My gripes would be the plastic uh, grips I don't prefer them. I like rubberized grips. Even little strips of rubber would be would have worked. That's a preference. Not everyone's like me. The glossy finish. I like matte finish. It helps with my hands. They get clammy. But I haven't really had any problems with this mouse so far of slipping. So I can't really complain about it like that. Now, as far as the LED, I'm fine with them. I'm not a big fan of LEDs. I prefer one small one. But, I mean, I get it. It's a gaming mouse. A lot of gamers like LEDs. It's nothing to... Nothing to really gripe about, so I'm okay with that. Um, the, w the wheel works well. The keys are all well placed for my own hands. Um, I also have nerve damage in my right hand. So what my hand does cramp up and it does go through a lot of pain very quickly. If something is uncomfortable for me. And this mouse I've used for hours and hours in the last few weeks. So I can honestly say that in my own, for my own comfort, my own hand shape, this mouse is very, very well designed ergonomically. And now, as far as aesthetics, I think it looks fine. I think it looks above $15, you know what I mean? And I do think that the LEDs are a good, func good, good functionality because they didn't just use them to show pretty colors. They use them as, also, they use them as DPI settings to let you know what you're at. This is actually yellow. It, it's coming out a pinkish color. I don't, I'm not too sure why, but that's the highest setting. Now, this is dark red. This is your lowest setting, 500. This is actually green. It's coming out bluish. This is, this is I believe, uh, 1,000. Blue, blue is purple, is 1,500. And this is back to yellow, which would be 20, 2,500. So it flickers four through five. You can't go back and forth. You have to cycle through the whole, you know, cycle through again. But honestly, like I said, for under, under $30, that's really no big deal. You know, I compare this to the Logitech G602 mouse, which is a wireless gaming mouse that I actually really do recommend if you need a wireless mouse. It's top of the line, in my opinion, from my experience. And also the uh, Spawn from Cooler Master, 
which is more of a claw grip style mouse. Um, both mice are very good. They have good sensors. They're both optical design. Um, and they both go through um, uh, DPI switching through uh, toggling of a button. So they really have something, something in common. Um, this mouse, I would say, is on par with the Cooler Master and isn't too far off from the Logitech. Granted, it's all preference. This is my preference. This is what I believe. I think it's on par with the Cooler Master as far as functionality, comfort, sensor, um, sensor stability, and just limited lag. Definitely on par. And that's saying something because the Cooler Master is, in my opinion, one of the best mice you can get under 40 bucks. And uh, the Cooler Master Spawn is definitely really good. Especially if you're claw grip style uh, gamer, I would definitely recommend that. Now, if you're a palm, palm um, style gamer, I would suggest this mouse in a heartbeat. Especially if you're left, left and, uh, and or right handed and you like ambidextrous designs. This is very comfortable. Probably the most comfortable amb ambidextrous design I've used. Granted, it hasn't been a lot of them because I'm not a fan of them. But the fact that I use this more sometimes than my own Logitech mouse that I like so much really should say a lot about the mouse. I completely forgot that I even had my Logitech for a while and I realized it's right next to me. I haven't been using it for almost two weeks. So I switched it up between the two. And I, didn't, I do like it. I still like both of them. But I think it's definitely a good mouse to get for backup. For, you just travel around with even. So if you need a, a cheaper mouse that you can, if it breaks, it won't be the end of the world. There you go. Great quality for a great price. I definitely recommend this mouse for anyone looking for an affordable gaming mouse. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you did, please leave commentary. If you have any questions about the mouse, also you can just send me a comment. If you're going to bash on me in my video, whisper me. Don't let the world see it. I don't need them adding to it. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, hope you guys have a good night. Happy holidays.